Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. I go by Ella Aquarela here on YouTube and my channel is about my journey into watercolors. I've been doing this for about two years and I just fell in love with this medium. And I wanna share my, my journey, my learning journey with you all. And I've been learning not just to draw and paint in watercolors, but I've also been learning what kind of materials I really like to use when using this medium. And I've been trying for the past couple of years a ton of different watercolor paints, brushes, papers, and different accessories for watercolor painting. And this right here is a Yarka St. Petersburg 36 full pan watercolor set. And I've been actually eyeing it for the past, over the past year. There are a lot of reviews on YouTube on this set. And they always say really good things about it. It's very affordable. I got it at Jerry's Artorama during Black Friday of 2017 for $49.99. So that's $50 for a 36 full pan set. That's a steal. It's supposed to be artist grade watercolor. And it came like this, um, basically with a, with a plastic wrap. So I've seen a bunch of other reviews of this uh, watercolor set and somehow I can't close it anymore. Uh, I've seen a bunch of reviews about this watercolor set on YouTube. They're called sometimes White Knights watercolors. There's tons of videos about them. So I was curious to try it out and see the differences. I believe the Yarka St. Petersburg watercolors are exactly the same thing as the White Knights. They're just marketed under a different name in the United States. And I bought these in the in Jerry's Art Arma in the United States. So the White Knights watercolors, at least the reviews that I've seen, come in a nice cardboard box and they come with a, like a swatch card and all this good stuff. This Yarka St. Petersburg set just came literally like this with a plastic shrink wrap around it. So it wasn't the prettiest packaging to, to be honest, but you know what? They're artist grade watercolors and they're full pans. And I mean, the price, you can't beat the price, $50, that's, that's amazing. And I even got like a free gift with purchase during Black Friday. So I'll, I'll add the link to the description um, to Jerry's and the Yarka sets. They might not be the same price anymore because we're not in Black Friday. This is 2018. Um, it's a February 2018. So this might be a different price, but hey, they might still be quite affordable. They also, you can also find these in, in Amazon. So you don't have to buy them at Jerry's. You can buy them in Amazon. I was not paid, by the way, to do this review um, or sponsored at all. This is my own opinion. I purchased these with my own money and I just wanted to try them out. So what we're going to do today is we're going to unwrap this beautiful set. I love the case. It um, seems to be very sturdy plastic. I'm not a fan of usually plastic palettes, but they are lighter than the metal ones and they travel well. And um, the plastic seems to be really good and sturdy. We'll try it out to see if it beads. And that can be fixed too, but we'll try it out. And we're going to unwrap all these uh, full pants. And I created a swatch card, nifty little swatch card here for all the colors. And we're going to swatch them out. And we'll see how they perform and compare them to other well-known watercolor brands. So at first glance, what I did was I laid all out all the colors. I wrote the, the pigment numbers for each one of the colors and the light fastness. So I just wanted to talk a little bit about the pigments and the light fastness before we go on to unwrap these. So this set is 36 full pans, like I mentioned, 25 of these colors are single pigment colors. And for those of you who paint a lot of watercolor, um, you know that having single pigments is, is very important because you can mix better and you won't get muddy colors later. 
So the less pigments in a paint color, the better. It'll be more vibrant and just more dynamic. It just will look better. Two pigments is not terrible, but it's not ideal, but it's still like not a deal breaker. And there is about six of these um, colors that are dual pigments. And there are three that are, sorry, there are five colors that are three pigments, that have three pigments. Three pigments is a lot, I think, to have, especially in an artist grade watercolor set. So that, that's a bit of a concern, but at least I have listed them out. So that's olive green, raw umber, Payne's gray, neutral tint. Um, these are all three pigment colors. And they're the, the darker colors. So the darker earth tones and grays, blacks. So it's not terrible because those, those colors you can sometimes mix yourself. I, when I ha use split primary palettes, when I travel, I do mix my own grays and blacks out of two or three colors. So, I mean, it's not terrible. At least it's not the primary colors that have three pigments. So that's, that's okay with me. I can live with that. And um, two pigment colors, there are a few that have two pigments, like the Scarlet Red, the Vermilion Hue, uh, Turquoise Blue. But they're not, I mean, again, not deal breakers for me. If you're really picky about having single pigments, you still have 25 single pigment colors in the set for $50. So assuming you only use single pigment colors, and you only use the 25 single pigments in the set for $50, you would have spent $2 per full pan, which is still super cheap. So definitely, I think it's still a good value. The other thing that I looked at was the light fastness. So in the website for these watercolors, and I will link that in the description, the, I looked at the color chart, and I don't know if you can see here, I wrote the legend down. So one little line is for excellent, two for very good, and three is for fair. And I kind of use different colors, blue, purple, and, and red, just so I can see better which colors are really fugitive, not very light fast. So the red ones, uh, there are about nine colors, which is, is quite a bit, I think. It's about 25% of the set is not light fast at all it's fugitive so you would want to stay away from these colors if you are an artist who wants to sell your artwork because if somebody hangs it on the wall and there's any sunlight that hits the the painting it will fade away really quickly so that's something to really watch out for if for me personally i mostly do um, just sketching on journals and sketchbooks and my work is usually inside a sketchbook so there's not a lot of light that goes in so in my case I might still use these uh, for those purposes but if I ever want to paint something to hang on a wall I will not use those nine colors so that is another limiting factor for this set and I have to say a lot of those uh, I mean some of the what one pigment or single pigment colors are fugitive <clears throat> so that you know it really um, limits your options and in terms of like ones that are have two lines which is the purple one there are uh, another nine colors that are not excellent light fastness and so that makes basically half of this set has excellent light fastness and the other half doesn't so basically you're stuck with 50% of the colors being excellent light fastness. So if you want to paint something that with only colors that have excellent light fastness and single pigments, uh, you are limited of, like, from this selection, you're, you're going to be limited. So you only have, for example, there are two blues that are single pigment and I'm sorry, three blues that are single pigment and excellent light fastness one green, <clears throat> one brown, sorry, two browns, 
Um, you have, let me see, yellows. You have one medium yellow, yellow ochre. You have another brown, I guess. Rossian is up here for some reason. And a couple of oranges. And you have one red. So there's only, I mean, English red, that's actually a kind of an earth tone. And we'll see it when we swatch it out. But that, you basically have no good reds that are single pigment and excellent light fastness. And there's a lot of reds in the set. There's a lot of reds. There's one, two, three, four, five, six reds. And none of them are single pigment and excellent light fastness. So that's definitely a limiting factor um, that this head has. Okay, so now that we got that out of the way, we got all the, the specifics, uh, we're gonna, I'm gonna open these up and I'm gonna swatch them out. So I might speed up this part of the video just so uh, in the interest of time. I will save these little paper um, wraps because it has all the pigment information, although you can find it online in their website but I'm probably gonna save that. And actually I'm noticing now that there is no pigment information on these pants, which kind of sucks really bad because I'm gonna have to write it out. So I think I'm gonna have to unwrap all these, write out the names and come back. All right, so I'll see you in a few minutes. Right, so we're done unwrapping and I used a Sharpie ultra fine point permanent marker to write the names of every single color for every single pan. So you can see it here. Trying to do a close up there and I'm going to put them back in their place and then we're going to start swatching. And I'm gonna try to do a close-up of the swatching just so you can see how each paint behaves. Um, I might have to speed that up as well just to, in the interest of time, to not have this video be too long. But already looking at these, they look beautiful colors. The, the pants, I do have to say, are a little dirty. So some of them have like paint all over them. Um, some other pans that I've bought in the past tend to be a little cleaner. So even if you try to, some of these are very pigmented and if you try to clean them, they just won't clean up. It just makes a mess. So I'm a bit OCD as I've said in other videos about keeping my palettes clean. So I don't like the paint everywhere, but here's what it is. So once they're in the case, you can't really see that that much. So there we go. So that's what it looks like all unwrapped and back in the case. Looks really, really cute. The only problem that I see here is that these move and they don't really lock into place. So that might be a problem when traveling. I don't know. So if you like, oh, look at that. There's actually a color chart in the back. There you go. Well, that's good to know. I didn't, I didn't realize. Um, so let's see if I move it around like that, what happens? Oh, they actually stay in place. So that's a terrible and it makes it easy to move around. So I guess that's not terrible, terrible. All right. So I'm going to get my trusty little, um, swatch card here and I'm going to try to swatch these out and hopefully try to focus on each one of them or zoom in so you can see better. I'm also going to be using an Old Trek number 12 sablette brush. I bought this at Blick and it's actually really, it's a synthetic, but it's a very good brush. I really like it. Uh, I don't use it enough, so I decided to use it for this. So I'm going to be using that for swatching. And I'm also using this um, kind of multi-cavity water reservoir because um, I want to keep one side clean, one side dirty. So I'm going to be swatching 36 colors and I don't want them to get contaminated. So I decided to speed up this part of the video in the interest of time as this was uh, becoming a very long video. So here you can see a sped up version of me swatching each of these colors. 
Apologies if this causes motion sickness as I'm going very fast and I'm moving the camera. What I try to do here is test for transparency, opacity, and to see how the, the pigment travels in the water. So I put a Sharpie marker um, line in the bottom of each swatch to see how transparent or opaque the colors are. And I also swatch like solid color on the top and then uh, clean water on the bottom to see how the pigments travel in the water. Um, I put also pigment information and light fastest information. I will show a dried version of this swatch card um, later in the video. So that way you can pause it and maybe if you want to stare at it for a bit longer, you can look at each one of the colors. Another thing I wanted to do while the swatches are drying was to see how this plastic palette performs uh, for mixing. And I'm just trying to see if we can focus there to see if it beads up. So actually this plastic does beat up quite a bit. So it's not that great for mixing because you can't really see the colors that you're mixing really well when they beat up. But there is a solution to that. So I'll probably either um, take an eraser, like either a white eraser or any, any type of eraser and just like erase here to kind of make this area more rough and less um, shiny. Um, also, you could take um, Mr. Clean Magic Eraser, which is like a white sponge that is used to clean bathrooms and such, and then um, kind of scrub it with that, or um, take anything that might be rough and that you might be able to get a little bit of the shiny off. You don't want to sand it with sandpaper or anything to ruin it. Um, also, the more you use it, the more, I mean, the better it will get but if you want to just not have to wait. So an eraser is good and a, um, just a regular eraser or a Mr. Clean Magic eraser. So now I think the swatches are finally dry. So I'm going to get those. Here they are. They actually look beautiful. They look very vibrant overall. Just my overall impression. Um, the Quinacridone Rose, remember how I was telling you how I thought it didn't travel well. Um, I think it did after a while. Uh, it just took a little bit longer. So overall the colors um, look great. They are artist grade so I would expect them to at least be decent and better than student grade watercolors. Um, as I said my main concern is the fact that there's a lot of fugitive colors here and a lot of those are single pigment, which limits the options if you want to actually use this to sell your work or actually hang it on a wall where you might get some light. So I also made some mixes. So I tried to mix some neutrals using ultramarine and burnt sienna, cadmium orange and blue lake and quinacrim rose and yellowish green. Just tried to use what I opposites or the ones that I thought were more opposite. So you can get different types of grays. Ultramarine and burnt sienna is a really nice combination. I also did some other color mixes, just color wheels. I did uh, on the left a more, I guess you could say less warm or like cooler color wheel. That I used Quinn Rose ultramarine blue and cat yellow. I know ultramarine is supposed to be a warm um, a warm blue, but it mixes really well with Conocrum Rose to, to give a nice purple. And then the warmer wheel, I used Hansa, Vermilion, and Blue Lake, and that actually gave some interesting results. Really, really warm orange, very, very dark blue instead of a purple. Uh, maybe I should have put more red in there and a more of a sappy green. So you can definitely, um, you don't need to mix that much with this side because you have so many colors, but um, if you want to just take a few on the road uh, for travel, then I mean, there's a lot of single pigment, so you can do that, especially for journaling or sketching. Uh, if you're in a, inside a sketchbook and it doesn't matter um, if the pigment is fugitive or not. I wanted to do a quick comparison 
with other brands. So I actually own uh, Turner Artist Watercolors. These are, I believe, also from Jerry's. And um, I haven't done a full review on these. But if you just look at the swatches from a distance, the Yarka St. Petersburg watercolors are so much more vibrant and they're so much more interesting looking than the Turner's Artist watercolors. So that's actually quite a surprise. I have to say that Turner Artist watercolors, they have, it's a set of 18, they come in tubes. Um, so you do get a little bit more paint. They are quite affordable though. You get 18 tubes for about $20. I got them for $19.99. Um, so they're very affordable. Um, I would say even more affordable than the Yarka, but the, you can tell they're definitely not as vibrant. So, I mean, sometimes, you know, you get what you pay for, but I would say these are comparable in terms of price. Um, cause you get like, these tubes are five millimeter to five milliliter tubes and you get them for like a little over one US dollar per tube. These are full pans, which are still big. And um, it's maybe equivalent to almost one of the same Turner tubes. And they're slightly more expensive. About the same price, I would say, actually, if you think about it. Um, these are other artist grade watercolors. These are a German brand called Kremer. So I just want to compare from a distance here. I mean, they're quite vibrant, the Yarkas. I love the Kremers. They're handmade watercolors and they have amazing uh, colors that granulate. And I think they're one of the best watercolors ever. But yeah, the Yarkas look pretty good. I have to say though, the Kremers are very light fast. So the, the, Yark, the Yarkas are not. And then a final comparison here with Daniel Smith. Daniel Smith is very vibrant usually. I don't own that many Daniel Smith colors. I have the split primary set and I have the quinacrone gold. And I would say they look similarly vibrant, but the Daniel Smith ones are, most of them are have excellent light fastness and are quite transparent and they layer amazingly. So definitely more expensive, but worth it. Like you, these are definitely better paints, but these are, great for beginner artists and those who want to try artist grade watercolors and don't want to pay an arm and a leg for paints while getting the similar results even though they might not be as light fast so i would definitely recommend these for the price uh, i wouldn't recommend them if you're a real professional artist and you want to sell your work but definitely for people who want to use artist grade and just want a good quality watercolor that they can practice with and do make some art with and maybe keep it in a sketchbook or pick and choose um, the light fast colors and single pigments if you want to actually make some some more some work that you want to sell all right so if you like this video please give it a thumbs up and subscribe i'll be posting additional videos about other reviews urban sketching and other watercolor related topics uh, so follow me if you want to see more of that and leave your comments below if you like this uh, Set do you have it? Do you have any other sets that you think are comparable or any other reviews that you would like to hear from me? So please leave those comments. I would love to hear from you and I'll see you next time. Bye